I saw this video that said where to retire with no money or practically no money. I stopped watching after the first three places because they happen to be the most expensive places in Latin America. Panama, Costa Rica, and Mexico. <laughs> and so it goes with these videos out here. There seems to be no end. All of this graffiti. Hey, hey, welcome back to our retirely life where we dissect everything that affects our retirely life, good and bad, home or abroad. Got some whoppers for you. Hang around, stick around. Got some good ones. Let's start with... Not all institutions appear to be bad, and I say appear because we don't really know. We have to judge them by their fruits. But apparently Twitter... Twitter has opted out of an EU disinformation agreement. <laughs> That's the one where they get to tell us what is truthful and what is not. You know, one of those deals. And so at least there appears to be some of these large social media institutional sized social media that appear to be trying to do good and not participate with evil. Moving on to the next whopper, apparently the San Francisco mayor has decided, you know, lots of people have been leaving San Francisco and a lot of people that are leaving these cities, well, they're going to all kinds of places like small town America or even abroad places like wherever is promoted on the internet, like Ecuador or Central America or even Mexico or all over the globe. But apparently the San Francisco mayor has decided to, well, fund the police because, well, these companies are leaving town because, well, they can't do business in an environment where everybody steals. <laughs> it seems like communism and evil only stand for a time and then it just kind of falls on its own weight. <laughs> but I was watching a video um, just this morning and these videos, they seem to be, there seems to be no end and people just love them. Judging by the fact that they have just an abnormal amount of views. And that is, I saw this video that said, where to retire with no money or practically no money. You know, and it had like 10 different places, but the very first, I stopped watching after the first three places because they happen to be the most expensive places in Latin America. Panama, Costa Rica, and Mexico. <laughs> but what the title really meant was places where you could qualify with very little to show to an immigration department. But even that wasn't correct because Mexico is ridiculously high with their requirements to show uh, an immigration department so that you could live there as someone that is retiring or not working locally. And so it goes with these videos out here, there seems to be no end. And it explains why so many people have difficulty hearing small niche channels like ours when we discuss the pros and cons and the reality of what it's actually like to live in some of these places. Speaking of which, on to my next whopper. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, I used to make a lot of crime videos. Um, I've covered places like Panama uh, and Ecuador and Mexico. And unfortunately, the latest thing is an expat family where the 44-year-old uh, woman of a, an expat family that uh, was living out into the country uh, on a farm, they had done the, the self-sufficient farm abroad thing. So they'd gone to Ecuador and were on a farm and they were home invaded and apparently the woman was shot and killed. This is just another incident that is just saddens us. Uh, you know, we've reported these kinds of incidents over and over and I just uh, wanted people to know that this kind of thing is real and it's really happening and it's happening to Americans. 
And so it isn't about, oh, there's crime everywhere because, well, you know, when you go abroad to live the ideal life that you have envisioned in your mind and you become the target and you become subject to this kind of uh, criminal behavior. Speaking of which, on to my next whopper. Apparently, according to journalistic rumor, there appears to be a kind of um, spreading of a thought of, of the way that the El Salvador president is handling crime in his country. And I don't know if it's related or not. You tell me what you think in the comments. But apparently the gangs were so out of control in Haiti that the locals have decided to fight back. And so the locals, uh, it's, it's just absolute chaos. I mean, they have taken matters in their own hands because, you know, we've heard this all before in a lot of these places, the police does nothing. And, uh, you know, they just uh, are not able to handle uh, the criminal gangs, which is what's happening now. It's been happening in a lot of, of these places. And so the locals, I'll spare you the, the gruesome details, but they have taken matters into their own hands and uh, to the level where people are easily uh, getting killed now, if even if they're not from the neighborhood. If they don't know you, if you, they don't know who you are and you wander into the neighborhood, they'll literally just kill you on the spot. I mean, they have to make sure they know who you are and why you're there. So I don't know if this kind of hard line against crime is, is spreading, is, if, if this is just the beginning of it spreading in Latin America. As I've said in my previous video, rising up against crime is a good thing, but the way that it's done cannot be in such a way that innocent people uh, end up suffering the brunt of this uh, renewed effort to uh, fight crime. So I wanted to tell you, in line with the videos, of great places to retire. It's funny because on, a, on the very same day, some of the countries on the list of best places to retire with no money also uh, made the list a uh, ranking of misery in the world. <laughs> Just to say that the misery index is established by large amounts of inflation, which comes back to the idea of fiat money being evil because it creates so much poverty in the world. And we seem to be seeing that in the United States. But in case you were wondering, Argentina uh, was one of those places where, by the way, I'm seeing videos about saying the cheapest place in the world. And I suppose that when these kinds of things happen with the inflation going to the moon in some of these countries, I remember when we first went to Mexico in the 80s. I was a much younger man and I didn't really understand all of these geopolitical issues as I do today. All I knew is that it was super cheap. Why? Because I now know it was because they were going through a currency collapse back in the 80s. I didn't know I back then. I just thought that's just the way things are for one reason or another. But even then I noticed certain aspects of it, the, the poverty, there were basically, there were people that were starving. And apparently the, the poverty level in Argentina is rising, uh, you know, to, just to unbelievable levels. And that's what uh, inflation does. And I'm concerned because this is a global problem. But nowadays, it's not like we don't have solutions. We've always had gold and silver, but even the unbanked can now take advantage. Gold and silver, sound like a great solution, but for the very poor, digital gold and silver is an even better solution because it's much easier to fractionize. You know, you can cut it into little slivers. You can't take a gold coin and shave off little pieces of it, although you can try to buy small, small fractions of a coin. But with all of the costs involved because of the dealers and the premiums and the you know, and everybody else that all of the distributors involved. It's uh, just so much easier once you can get a hold of a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin uh, or, or any other privacy coin where you can just uh, deal in whatever amounts suits you in a very convenient and trustless manner. 
so you don't have to wait on a bank or trust a bank, you know, or have a bank tell you, no, sorry, we don't accept your business or we don't like your business, we don't like you, it's not part of our agenda or whatever it is, you know, you can just start using uh, Bitcoin uh, right away. So I see this subject and I see so many different aspects of the same subject. You know, like you, like you see a country on the best place to retire with no money, then you see the country on video saying the cheapest, high, class, high quality a country, and then you also see it top ranking on the misery index in the world. So, <laughs> which is it folks? Um, I guess it depends on who you are and uh, uh, why you're there. So I just want to remind my viewers that when we go to these places, we should be mindful of the fact that even though back in the day we did things like go to Mexico and it was cheap, it was only a two week vacation, we enjoyed it for the two weeks, then we went back home. Nowadays, there's a lot more people actually moving to these places and I just remind my viewers that we should be very mindful of the fact that a lot of these people are becoming poorer and poorer and so we don't really want to be going to these places and doing the thing that we as foreigners always seem to be seem to, to do because it's just a natural thing like comparing to back home and paying whatever is asked they're already suffering once from the poverty that is in, induced on them by their evil money system but we also don't want to be the ones that come around and are responsible for gentrifying the locals and causing them even more um, discomfort. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are and uh, have a nice day.